Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lake Helen United Church of Christ virtual worship service for Sunday, December 6. It's nice to have you all with us this morning. Today is Communion Sunday, so if you anticipate participating in Communion, please go get the elements that you need. Yesterday was our craft fair, and it was a great success. I'll have more information on that later, probably next week. The book club is meeting this week on uh, the um, 16th at 7 o'clock on Zoom. If you need information, you can check the bulletin board or you can call Raymond or Raphael. They will be discussing books to read in next year, so bring your ideas. Don't forget the porch gatherings on Tuesday at 6 o'clock at Shalom House and on Friday at 3.30 on the Parish House porch. We look forward to seeing everyone. Oh, let's see. Then we have birthdays this week. We have one birthday this week on the 12th. That's next Saturday, Susan Monaco. So happy birthday, Susan. And that's all the announcements for today. So let's worship. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare ye a way for the Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Arise and ascend. Let us go to the highest and most visible places, and let us proclaim glad tidings of peace. Christ is coming. Do not be afraid. Lift up your voices so that all may hear and find peace. Christ is coming. Here is our peace. Although as sheep we have often gone astray, God has gathered us with arms of compassion. We are protected in God's bosom and led to quiet waters. Let us light this candle as we proclaim peace to all. We have been gathered. Let us share our song of peace with one another. Today we light the second candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of peace. We celebrate and remember that our God offers each and all of us a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that shines most fully in the one who is coming into the world 
once more. The words of our call to worship are found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make God's way clear. Lift up every valley, lower every mountain, for the glory of the Lord shall be revealed.
Today we are reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 1 through verse 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cried out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become a level, and the rough places as a plain. Then the Lord of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it, see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. The constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows up upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers the flower fades, but the Lord of our God will stand forever. Get up to his high mountain, O Zion, herald, O God, tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald, O good tidings. Lift up, do not fear, say to the city of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother to sheep. The word of God for the people of God's Way of Love Lasts Forever, written by Catherine Matthews. Imagine an ordination service for a prophet, except that the church officials in robes are replaced by God on a throne, and the congregation by hosts of angels and heavenly messengers. The music in the service will be particularly good. The prophet Isaiah in char is, is charged to deliver a message from God to the people of God, the people of Israel in captivity in Babylon. The people of the 6th century BCE, Israel had lost their temple, the great city of Jerusalem, and all that it symbolized in the land as well. Their leaders carried off into exile in Babylon. However, even before this disaster, their system, like any system, had never really known exactly what to do with a true prophet. So we assume that the ordination service of the second Isaiah was experienced as a call from God to speak, a word to the people. And it's that call, that service, that, that message, that are described by our text on the second Sunday in Advent, more than a 25 century later. For the first 39 chapters of the book of prophet Isaiah, the prophet scholars call first Isaiah, delivered a word of warning, threats of God's judgment to the people of the eighth century BCE, Jerusalem. 200 years later, later a second Isaiah answer his call to speak. Much has happened. First Isaiah spoke of all the threat of the mighty empire of Isaiah. But in second Isaiah time, the Babylonian empire has destroyed Jerusalem and carried the people off to captivity. Only one word of hope amid all the long grief. But then, second Isaiah comes along. Thanks to God's great compassion, to cry comfort 
to the people, release and forgiveness, the promise of restoration, and a great homecoming. Second Isaiah is all about hope, a hope rooted not in the people's strength or wits of goodness, but in the faithfulness of God. It's surprising, unexpected word of hope, and a challenging one as well. Many of the Jewish people must have wondered where God had gone. They felt cut off, far away from God. We know that people in every age have felt the, dis dis the distance caused by sin and guilt and struggle to reach across it. But God would not forget, forget God's people or the covenant God has with them. The prophet reassure us of God's anyway love for us. We sin, but we can always count on God's faithfulness, on the word of God that will stand forever. The God we meet in the Old Testament was commonly being described as a God of fear and threat. While the God of the New Testament, it, it has been said, is all about love and tenderness. Second Isaiah paints a full of portrait of God. Yes, the God who comes, like ancient deities, including the gods of their capture, Babylon. It's mighty and glorious and powerful, but the God of Israel is also gentle shepherd who feeds the flock, gathers up, lambs and hold them close. The people then are urged to make a way for their good news and their lives. Transformation of their situation. The power that be, in this case, the fearsome empire of Babylon, have been overturned. The mighty have fallen and the little ones have can dance with joy. All of this is good news and the stuff of joy, but it's also unbelievable while you're still sunk in despair under the heel of oppressor. At this ordination, second Isaiah is told to speak tenderly to Jerusalem. So in the second of Advent reflection in the church, a season that once was potential season of preparation, while well, the world has already started a celebration in decoration, parties, music, and shopping. Our heads have some work to do before our hearts are carried away by holiday joy. Would this image of the prophet speaking to both hearts and minds help you to hear God's call, God's ways of love, as good news and challenge for us today? Not just for the, pe for the people thousands of years ago, what speaks to your heart and mind. Just as the people of Israel long ago were told to clear a path for God, to make a way where there appeared to be no way. The text tells us, too, to make a way for God to come into our life, to remove the obstacles of impediments to tear down the rather than build up walls, to clear out all animosities and grievance, to cut back the weeds of doubt and greed, not to just make a nice little bed for the newborn, but to open up our life to transformation of grace. In Advent, we atone our hearts and minds to many ways that God enters our lives and the life of the world, the holiness and the everyday reality of our lives and moment, momentous lives, a nation in every age. The scholars writing on this, this text focus little on our private holiness and personal sins, and much more on the way we collectively organize our lives and the deep longing of the people for hope in the midst of the larger events in history. However, we can't underestimate 
the collective effect of individuals seeking to welcome God's grace into their own lives and to encounter God each and every day. In most unexpected but wonderful field ways, as Aunt Lamotte has said about this season in Advent, we show up when we are needed with grit and kindness. We try to help. We prepare for an end to the despair, and we do this together. A new Jerusalem, a homecoming to Great City, restore as the dream and the promise of this text. Thousands of years later, we have experienced heartbreaking loss and discouragement too, including war, poverty, violence, irreparable harm to God's beautiful creation, economic injustice, and hatred. Perhaps we are becoming numb to the news. People are gunned down in the streets of our cities. Police officers and young men of color, as well as those victims of mass shooters. Terrible, heartbreaking, tragedies for everyone concerned. And they appeal and outrage us. And then we go back to our lives and hope and pray that our loved ones will never be in that line of fire. We feel the wrenching sorrow of such laws and the violence and the drenches of our culture. The world in which, we, which it all unfolds. We feel the rent of the fabric of our neighborhoods, our cities and town, and every community and the nation itself and the world that grows smaller each day. The world in which we are all neighbors, all sisters and brothers longing for peace. Many of us struggle to make sense of, of it all. Offering our reactions and suggestions in social media threats, along with our anger and grief. Placing blame and holding accountable various individuals rather than all, all of us for the unnamely things that are happening every day, everywhere. Our minds and hearts grow weary, almost numb and immobilized. We might, find, we, might, we might find ourselves longing even more deeply for the word of comfort, for that larger shalom that we imagine and lean towards during, those during, during this Advent season. The promise of peace and healing and reconciliation. No more war, no more violence, no more threats, no more fear, no more heartache. Can we even imagine such a time? We live in the midst of our own Babylons, our own overwhelming brokenness, and seek to find the sign of God promise that lifts our spirit and our eye to the hidden reality of Shalom, breaking forth in spite of our best, or rather worse, efforts to keep it very deep below our fragile and under exercised faculties and of hope and imagination. In this Advent, in this season of Advent, what are you preparing for? What sort of road needs to be made broad and smooth in your heart in preparation for the coming of the one who shepherds us? Is it, is it easier to believe in God when you're in captivity? Then is to be believed the captivity is really over? What are the signs that things are about to change? Are you courageous, courage enough to hope for such a thing to happen? Amen. Let us come to an attitude of prayer. Loving God, you sent your prophet John to prepare your way among us, to call us to repentance and to make our pathways straight. 
strengthen us to live lives of steadfast love and faithfulness as we await the Messiah's return, that all may see your reign of peace. We pray for all leaders and people of the world. You have created one human family to live in righteousness and peace. Give us the wisdom to order life according to your loving purposes, that your glory may be revealed and all people shall see it together. We pray for your church. You have given us the gift of the Messiah so that your church may be steadfast and true. Give us strength to follow your son until all have come to repentance and are reconciled by his love. We pray for those on our prayer list and for all who are sick, who suffer need, who are exiled or in danger. You have made us for a holy purpose to comfort and care for each other. Give us compassion to love our neighbor and patience to care for those in need. We pray God for your creation. Your faithfulness springs up from the ground and your goodness looks down from the sky. Rid us of laziness and greed that diminish life as you teach us to care for your creation together. Let us remember those who have died. One day in your presence is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. Make us one with the saints who have found their eternal home in you. We pray in the name of Christ, who was and is and is to come. Amen. And now please join me in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the wonderful Advent season, the time that we are in right now, the time in which we are preparing for the ultimate promise that is to come. For we are reminded with the candle of hope that this table also represents the hope which we already have within us, the hope of that promise that is to come. And we just have the candle of peace. For this table also reminds us that God provides peace in a way that no other source can. For it was at this table where Jesus gathered with his closest friends, those who truly knew him, those who walked with him, and those who talked amongst and with him as well. For they shared a sacred meal. It was at this table where Jesus took the bread and blessed it, lifted it up, gave God thanks, and broke it. And he said, now this bread represents my body that is for each and every one of you. For whenever you eat this, you do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake. In the eating of the bread. And then after they shared that meal, Jesus took the fruit from the vine. And he lifted it up and blessed it and gave God thanks. And then he passed this cup to each and every one of them saying, now this cup represents the cup of love that I have poured out for each and every one of you. So whenever you drink this, you also do this in remembrance of me. Let us now drink from the cup of love. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for the hope that we have within each and every one of us. We thank you for the peace that we know that is to come. The peace and only the way in which you can provide. As we continue through this Advent season, may we be reminded of the ultimate life that is to come. The light of reassurance the light that lets us know that all is well. But more importantly, it is the gift of the promise that you have for each and every one of us because of your love for us. Amen. May the God of hope, who created the sun, the moon, and the stars, bless you with new life. May the God of hope, who promised Abraham a legacy through the stars, bless you with abundance. May the God of hope, who led the wise men to Jesus with a star, bless you with courage. Go out into the world and search for the star that God has sent to guide you. Amen. Thank you for attending and viewing our virtual service. 
These are certainly strange times, and we have had to learn and do new things as we closed our doors to keep the congregation and community safe and healthy. But COVID-19 has not stopped Lake Helen UCC from being the church. We are the church from home. We are always here for you. There are several ways to find out what we are doing and how you can reach out to us in your time of need. Find out what we're doing through our website at lakehelen-ucc.com. That's lakehelen-ucc.com. Or on Facebook by putting in the search at Lake Helen UCC. That's the at sign at Lake Helen UCC. Our email address is Lake Helen UCC at CFL dot R R dot com. Again, Lake Helen. UCC at CFL.RR.com. Our phone number is 386 218 5976. That's 386 218 five nine seven six thank you stay safe be blessed